Hello GED students, it's GED question of the daytime. Let's take a look and read the directions. It says solve the inequality for m. So if I say solve for m, let's start with that place, uh, that part, what I'm saying is get m alone. Get m alone on its side. Um, Usually we're solving equations, but here you can see we are solving an inequality. Inequality is really similar to an equation. The big difference is instead of seeing an equal sign between the two expressions, you'll see an inequality sign. And the inequality, whoa, sorry. The inequality signs could be a less than sign, a greater than sign, a less than or equal to sign, or a greater than or equal to sign. So I still have to, I still have a relationship between the two sides of this um, mathematical um, relationship here. There's still a relationship between the left and the right hand side. But what I'm saying now is that this left hand side, this whole ugly thing here, is something that's less than or possibly maybe equal to this right hand side. Okay. Now I have great news, even though it looks kind of gross. Um, all the rules for solving equations actually apply when solving inequalities. So we can solve, use our three big principles for linear equations that we've been using, just like always. The first one is simplify. If there's any forwards math you know how to do on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the equation, those are two separate expressions. So if you know how to simplify those expressions, you should. Second thing is get the variable terms to the same side. That's always a good rule of thumb. You want all the letters on one side. Now on an equation, it doesn't really matter which side. On an inequality, I like to get them to the left. Do I have to get them to the left? No, I don't. As it turns out, there's a way to deal with it on the right. But it's just usually easier for students to understand when the letter's on the left. So we'll try to do that. And then three, finally, we'll isolate that letter. We'll get that letter alone. We'll take all the numbers away from it. We'll isolate the variable. So those are the big three wisdom principles when uh, solving equations or inequalities, linear ones anyway, which is all we've seen so far. So, and which is most of what the GED has. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to simplify um, the left-hand side. I see some work I know how to do on the left-hand side. I see this three shoved up against this parentheses. That's a sign that this three is multiplying with all the numbers in this parentheses. And so I know how to multiply. I can always multiply, um, even with algebraic expressions, even with letters involved. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Three times two M is six M. And three times negative seven, remember that multiplication distributes or passes, passes out over parentheses, is negative 21. Now notice my plus 4 is out of the parentheses, so my plus 4 is not going to get involved in that multiplication. I'm just going to drop it. I've done nothing to make me want to change my, my inequality symbol, so it will remain. And then on the right-hand side, I see some multiplication here, but this multiplication, negative 2, is only timesing by m. Since I don't know what m is, I can't really do anything about that. I see some addition here, but again, I can't do that either because these two things are not like terms, and we know we can only add and subtract like terms. So there's not really any work to do on the right-hand side, so I drop it. Now, watch out. There is still more simplifying to do on the left-hand side of this inequality. I see some like terms I can combine. Negative 21 is a plain old number. Positive 4 is a plain old number. I've always been able to add and subtract plain old numbers. Let's go ahead and do that. So I won't touch my 6m, but I will combine these like terms, negative 21 plus 4. I was in debt $21, but then I added $4 to my account, so my debt is going to lessen. So let's see, negative 20, 19, 18, 17. I went up by 4. I haven't done anything to make me want to change my inequality sign, and again, I can't simplify the right. Great. So now I've done all the simplifying I can do on the left-hand side. There's no more work I can do. And all the simplifying I can do on the right-hand side. So I finished the first basic wisdom principle for solving. Uh, for solving linear equations and inequalities. Next step says get the variable terms to one side. Now this doesn't always come up, but sometimes it does. And it's coming up for us right now. Notice I have an M on the left side 
and I have an M on the right hand side of this inequality. I cannot have an M on both sides um, or I'll never be able to get the numbers away from the letters because the letters are everywhere. And it's going to be super important to get my letters to the same side before I start trying to isolate. So what I'll do is I'll take this entire negative 2m and move it by changing the sign. I'm going to add 2m. That'll make it zero out. I'm moving the entire term. That's why I use addition and not division. I'm not just moving a number. I'm moving the whole negative 2m. Okay. So negative 2m plus 2m on this side zeroes out, and I'm just left with positive 7 or 7. Mm. I meant to write my new equation in black, new inequality in black. I haven't done anything to make me want to change my inequality symbol. On this side, if I had 6m already and I added another 2m, I'll have 8m. I had negative 17 and I haven't done anything to change that, so I still have negative 17. Great. And now, now that I got the variable terms to one side, and we'd like that to be the left in an inequality, I can go ahead and do the work to isolate the variable. Remember, if you're getting rid of more than one number when you're solving, you actually work the order of operations backwards. So I'll move any terms that are adding or subtracting first. So that 17 is subtracting from 8m. So I'll get rid of it by doing the opposite. I'll add 17. And because I'm the one who decided to make that change, I'll do it to both sides of my inequality. Okay, after I make that change to both sides of my inequality, let's see the new relationship. Now I have just 8m on this side because those two zeroed out. And that'll be less than or equal to this math. 7 plus 17 is 24. So, almost done. The letter's almost alone. I have 8m is less than or equal to 24, but i got to get the m alone. So that 8 and that m are currently multiplying. So if I just want to move that number, I'll divide both sides by 8. Divide both sides by 8. And I ran out of space again. Super sorry, but I'll come over here on the left. So 8... T multiplying by 8, sorry, and dividing by 8 cancel so that m will be alone. I've done nothing to make me want to change the inequality symbol, and there's the math to do. 24 divided by 8 gives me 3. So m is less than or equal to 3. Now, this is the solution written as an inequality. This is a perfectly good solution. Um, m is less than or equal to 3. That is an answer. They also might ask you to graph your answer in the GED. If you were graphing this answer, it would just be on a number line. That number line would have to have 3 on it somewhere. <laughs> okay, Because this is less than or equal to 3, that little slash on the bottom, I'm going to want to use the filled in circle because 3 is an okay answer. Then I'm going to go off in the less than direction. Notice my inequality symbol pointed left and I the less than direction is left. I'm going to shade out to the left. And this would be a graph of my answer on a number line. The answer could be written in either form, so I want you to see it both ways. Great. So if you have any questions about this um, inequality, be sure to drop it in the comments.